How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Group. Mike here. I am still down in Michigan at Midwest Panel. As you guys know, I'm here for the week and I'm here to work on my panel for the airplane. And today, what I would like to do is give you a tour of the workshop here, show you some of the stuff that's been done and how these things are put together. We're going to be talking to Adam. He's going to give us a tour of the shop and show you some of the things that goes on in the background, some of the technical uh, aspects of these. Hi, I'm Adam from Midwest Panel Builders. And uh, so welcome to our build facility. What we've got here is the uh, Sling TSI uh, boards for the harness. This is an example of a harness that we're building right now. Um, and this is going to be pretty similar to how uh, Mojo's harness is going to look when, uh, when it comes time to do the full build on that. Uh, so when we start any project, the first thing we do is go ahead and make our wiring diagrams for it. Um, engineer the whole system to make sure that everything's going to work. And then, uh, then we just build it. So this one here is uh, about 90% to completion. Um, so you can pretty, pretty well get an idea of how this is going to look. So this harness board essentially mimics um, what would be a sling TSI aircraft. So you can kind of look at it and get an idea of where in the airplane everything's going to be. Uh, so this junction right here covers everything that's going to be behind the instrument panel and also on our LRU rack. Uh, so you can see things like uh, the GU, so this is your G3X touch screens, um, your GTN or for some people the GNX or GNC355 would be over here. Um, so it gives us a visual layout of what the airplane's going to look like, helps us run our wires. Uh, moving further along, you can go back here and see we have right wing, so this is for like your uh, lighting. Um, also left wing for uh, as well as lighting uh, pedal heat. Uh, back here we have the roll servo for the autopilot, headset jacks. Uh, moving forward, or rearward rather. Um, you know, here we have kind of under the passenger seat area. So this is where the pitch servo is going to go for the autopilot. Um, all the way back through here, we have like the magnetometer, rear headset jacks. Um, also, we pre-wired all of the antenna runs as well. Um, so it's a really great system for us to be able to efficiently build these harnesses and uh, put something together uh, that works perfectly in any sling aircraft. While the harness build is going on, uh, we also will be doing the panel build here. So this is another example of a panel build. Um, so you can see that we uh, go ahead and just wire the panel right on our little cradle here. Uh, what's nice about our system is we make it as completely modular as we possibly can. So we can build everything in its own different piece and then when it all goes into the airplane, just a few connectors and everything's plugged in, wired, and ready to go. And that's why we call it our 95% plug and play system. Um, just like with anything, there's never a truly 100% plug and play system just because we can't wire everything for you. But the Sling TSI is great because um, as a builder, you make three, four, maybe five connections, um, and essentially your entire wiring harness is installed and wired and ready to go. So when we're doing a full harness project like this, where we have the harness, the panel, all the avionics, um, it's usually about a month to a month and a half from start to finish. Uh, this also includes some wait time for some equipment, you know, Garmin being so popular that you have a little bit of a lead time on some things. Um, also, you know, we do have to get the panels and stuff like that cut. So right here is a, an example of an actual panel for a Sling TSI. This is actually going to be... A little, yeah, this is going to be a little bit closer maybe to yours except for he's got a couple extra. Like he's got the VPX. Right, no I, don't, I don't see any breakers there. Uh, he's also got a um, pulse oximeter and CO detector system. Oh, cool. Um, so that will be the one where you put your finger in and it tells you your heart rate and all that. Huh, I, I, I totally didn't... Uh, that's a cool thing to have. I <laughs> yeah, and what's nice is this uh, talks to the G3X system just like oh. everything else we do. So um, when you get up to certain uh, altitudes, you know, above 12,000, it starts telling you, I want to say, for 15 minutes to check your, your oxygen yes, level. Um, and then as you go up higher in the altitudes, you know, 14,000, uh, 18,000, you know, it, it tells you more often to check your oxygen levels. It's a little more stringent on it. So it's a great awareness system because, as you know, hypoxia, oftentimes yep. you don't even realize that yep. you're getting it. Now, if this is an option that, like, if I wanted to have this option right now, i just let you know, like, hey, can I have this built in? And how, how does it typically, like, just anything, 
uh, how do you how does a customer typically come to you? Do, do they like just give you a list of things that they want? So when we're working with customers, um, the first thing we do is ask them what's the mission of the aircraft, um, and that right there tells us basically everything that we need to know. Um, things like this pulse oximeter, um, you know, or, or maybe like a second com radio or the different grip options that we have. Um, that stuff that will kind of go back and forth with them to kind of help them decide. So, um, you know, basically we just go to them and say, hey, you know, we have the ability to do this, this, and this. Um, you know, here's why you would do it. Here's why you might not do it. Um, you know, what would you like to do, essentially? Okay. Uh, and what that lets us do is it lets us give the customer the absolute best system that we possibly can. Now, certain things like the pulse oximeter, uh, we have to make that determination uh, before, really before we start the project, um, because as you can see, you know, it requires a whole new panel. So now we have to work with that. So we've talked about that. Um, now I see a, a start engine here. Yes. Which is something that I also would love to have. Can you tell me how, how that works? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we got a baby in here. Keep going. It don't matter. So uh, we, this engine start button here is part of our new IntelliKey system that we've developed this year uh, and that we're going to also be including in your aircraft. Uh, so the IntelliKey system, you know, part of modernizing the aircraft, uh, you know, like we discussed before, is you know bringing some features that you know cars have had for 10 years now into the airplanes. Um, so most new vehicles these days come with push-button start systems. Put your foot on the brake, push the button. As long as the key is in your pocket, the car will start. Right. So we're bringing that to the aircraft um, with a little bit of a variation, of course. You know. Our first concern on any feature that we put into these airplanes is safety. So first we look at these systems to determine is it safe and you know what are the different failure scenarios um, and, and what's, what are the consequences of that. Uh, so with this system um, that was no exception and so the way that this system works is your master is always on the switch. Um, so if, if the IntelliKey system were to ever fail, your, your master's not shutting off. Furthermore, uh, we've set it up so that, you know, unlike a car where that push button is also tied to the ignition, if the system does fail, your engine just doesn't stop running. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, it's all tied to the lane switches for the engine. So as long as those are on, as long as the engine's already running, a failure of that system does not, you know, it, it won't cause catastrophic issues. You know, the, the other safety benefit of it is you know, in, in a lot of airplanes that have a push button start, um, you just push the button and it starts, no matter whether or not there's a key or, or anything. Um, and, and even in airplanes that do have key switches, you know, all you have to do is reach back behind the panel, pull two screws and touch two wires together and the engine will start. It's mm -hmm. actually that easy. With this system, because we have, you know, a computer module that's, that's actively looking for these keys, um, there's a little bit of a safety increase to that, you know, and a little bit of theft prevention. Any system can be bypassed if somebody really wants to, but we made it that much harder. Um, and also, the system, you know, if, if your key battery dies, for anybody who's familiar with the Tesla where they use the key card to touch the door to unlock it, and then they put it in the little center console to start it, we have a similar feature where we have, you know, we call it the bypass card, but it's the same thing. You touch it to a little antenna that's hidden in the aircraft, and then now the system will work just like normal. So even if your key battery dies, you're not stranded. So one of our big focuses here at Midwest Panel Builders is efficiency. Um, you know, it helps us deliver products on time, but it also helps us make sure that everything that we do is exactly the way that the customer wants it and exactly to the high standards that we set for ourselves. Um, so efficiency comes down to inventory management. So this is um, kind of our, our parts area here where most of our, or our highly used parts get held. Um, so, you know, everything from connectors to heat shrink to all the different little pieces that go into a system we've got over here. And then uh, moving further along, you know, we've got our part shelves. So every shelf gets tied to a customer. Uh, again, it's, it's about organization and efficiency. We're not looking for people's avionics just strung all over the place. We've got everything assigned. Um, it also lets us make sure that nothing gets lost or anything like that. Um, and so 
Having you know a system like this, where we try to uh, you know make life as easy as possible for us, uh, in the end translates to a better product. Okay, awesome. Uh, now, here is another sample panel here. Uh, actually, if you don't mind discussing what, what the the actual equipment that's going to go in, into this. Yeah, yeah. And we have some stuff here. Maybe you can show us some sample. After we work with the customer to determine uh, what their options are going to be in their panel, uh, then we go ahead and we design that panel in CAD, as well as we'll also send them a rendering uh, for their approval. Um, and we don't do anything without their approval, uh, because then you know it's all part of our process to make sure that they really get what they want. Um, so after the CAD file has been completed, um, and we send that out for cutting, we have what you see here. Uh, so the cutting, it's a laser cut panel. So every single hole, every piece of this panel has all been laser cut. Um, and then we go ahead and do a little bit of processing on it. So, uh, you know, like we'll countersink some of the holes for the displays and stuff, uh, any of the flush screws that we need to go in. And then uh, we'll have them powder coated. Uh, so we have a few different color options for powder coat. You can see we've got a little sample swatch here. Uh, so Mojo's getting the, uh, the black color, or we, coal as we call it. Um, our other mo popular color is charcoal. As a matter of fact, coal and char uh, charcoal are most popular. Um, and then uh, we also have tanker gray, which is uh, kind of like a Boeing gray. So it seems like anybody who's a uh, Boeing pilot wants to pick that color. <laughs> um, and in addition to the panel, we also will powder coat the throttle quadrant so that we can match it to the instrument panel of the aircraft. Um, when you get a th throttle quadrant from the airplane factory, it comes with the 3M vinyl wrap of like the carbon fiber, and you've probably, if you've seen Mike's videos and some of the slings that he's uh, filmed, you would have seen that. And uh, we like the powder coat because it's a lot more durable of a finish, because you know, one hot day in the sun, all that vinyl will start to bubble. Um, so by powder coating it, we deliver a much more quality product. And then we laser etch all the labeling on the nose too. If you're interested in a little bit more information about our system, uh, you know, pricing, exact equipment, things like that, uh, please feel free to give us a call at 810-356-3855 or you can visit us online at midwestpanels.com. Uh, we've got a nice interactive uh, form for you to go through to kind of work out a system and then uh, we'll go ahead and contact you and uh, start the process.